Yes. There you go. All right, do we care about this? We like this shirt, right? We love it. Oh, we love it so much. Hip, hip, hip. If I stand up straight, I'm too tall. Can you get your face out of here? <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to The Common Critic. Buenas noches! Me amo Brandon! Hi, Nana. <laughs> yes, I'm taking Spanish again. And we're doing Buy or Sell the Hype. This week on Buy or Sell the Hype, we are reviewing a great show that we both love called Tongue Twister, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Who gives a toast at her own wedding? I do. <laughs> We can be downtown people, close to the clubs. I thought you wanted to be a cool chick. I could be a cool chick with a doorman and a Calvinator Fooderama refrigerator, can't I? Yes, you can. Did you ever think you were supposed to be something and you, and you suddenly realize you're not? Yes. Married. I was a great wife. I was fun. I got 15 years I've been working in clubs, okay? Twice have I seen someone deliver the goods. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your act. I am a mother. I don't have an act. And you will when we're done. Hi, everybody! This comedy thing, it has to work. We're gonna count to five. One. That's the end of my show, folks. Two. Tune in next week when my grandmother steals Three. my pearls and fucks my boyfriend. Four. The charge for pictures now. There's something here about miming a whore tickling a man's testicles. Oh, I oh, did yeah, do that. Yeah, she did. It was fucking funny. So this is an award-winning Amazon Prime original comedy series about a young housewife in the 1950s who has done literally absolutely everything she can to be the perfect housewife um, and mother to her, let's be honest, ungrateful husband. Um, She's and the mother to her husband? <laughs> mother to her children. I don't know. Just the perfect housewife. She's the perfect Anyway, her, her life flips upside down mm -hmm. uh, in the first episode and she basically falls into comedy and gets real raunchy real fast. Bob Newhart's got a set of these at home. Rickles maybe. Yeah, so she absolutely just fell face first into a profession that I don't think she ever thought that she could possibly have. No. Um, or she would ever do. And she didn't want, like, she wanted yeah. a perfect 50s life. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, uh, one thing though, Midge, Maisel, um, was not a real person in real life. I actually thought she was. I guess it's a testament to how good the show is. Um, yeah. but she was actually loosely based on the most fantastic, uh, female comedic legends, Phyllis Diller and Joan Rivers. Mm -hmm. I think more specifically Joan Rivers for her in-your-face style of comedy, mm -hmm. but you know, just really loud and in your face in a man's world. You know, think Mad Men. Um, that's kind of where my mind goes to. So women, they belong with husbands. They belong at home. They belong, you know, they're the caregivers. Um, <clears throat> they're the house, they're the housewives, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's it. The way it should be. So that's exactly the mm -hmm. way it should be. <laughs> it's not the way it should be. Anyway, so she, like she said, she uh, she falls into the comedy world, and she's really, really good at it. Uh, full disclosure. Yep. What was your favorite part of it? Uh, so, I think it's pretty easy for me. So my favorite part of the whole thing was um, that Mrs. Maisel, she sticks it to the man. So by that, I mean she is a strong female voice in a predominantly male-dominated profession. Let's be honest, it still is, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it's a real hard women's breakthrough, yeah. even now. Yeah, and I mean, they're typecasted, right? They say a lot of the same stuff, and then that stinks. And, and Yeah, and it's also hard to be an attractive female comic. I feel exactly, like yeah. all the ones that are big at the moment, they're still self-deprecating about their looks. Mm -hmm. And Whitney Cummings talks about that, right? Mm. Like, she says, Man, what am I going to do? Everyone's looking at me, not, not hearing me, right? Mm. Uh, so she's a really good-looking woman. And she goes up there and she absolutely kills it. Yeah. Uh, because she's talking about real life. 
Um, but more so than that, not only is she a female, or I'm sorry, a male-dominated profession, she's also in a male-dominated world. She's in the 1950s. I mean, put your bow on, put your apron on, and, and stay in the <laughs> kitchen, right? I heard some uptown chick got arrested doing a set. What's the crime? Simulating a sex act while on stage. That's bullshit. This is amazing. Yeah, it's literally a different world from now. It's a different world, yeah. So what was your favorite part? Uh, I mean, kind of going off that, I guess. Just the extreme contrast that it shows between her wanting to be this hyper-perfect mm -hmm. um, 50s housewife, yep. where, I mean, she does things that seem just crazy and ridiculous mm -hmm. to us today, like taking off her makeup before, well, after he goes to sleep every single night. And then waking up early and putting on the makeup before he wakes up. Mm-hmm, putting it all back on, taking so, out the hair pins. So he thinks this is what she looks like. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous, but yeah. that's what she... That was their norm. Yeah, that was her norm, and that's what all she knew. Yeah. Um, to her then getting on stage and flashing her boobs to a crowd of strangers. They're standing up on their own. She had a breaking point, and then you almost saw the real her come out. Oh, yeah. And I think that was, I think that might be my, you know what, that's probably my favorite part. Yeah. I loved it. Because, I mean, I believe that she does like the lifestyle, like getting dressed up and being yeah. all pretty, but she has a personality, she has a voice of her own that she wasn't allowed to share up until yeah. she had nothing to lose. It's almost like really, really encouraging. And, I mean, the acting <clears throat> is just so good. Like, she's, Spot on. Yeah, super authentic, mm -hmm. really relatable for me anyway. She's... Great. Well, you know what? With that, ask me what my bad is. <laughs> Why? What's your bad? So, I agree with everything she just said. I love the characters. I actually think the acting does feel really authentic. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay, Jewish right. families in New York in the 50s, and everything hits the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. The only thing... Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I grew up watching Gilmore Girls with, like, my mom. And maybe that's why I have a bad taste in my mouth for it. But Gilmore Girls has a cult following. Okay, let me get to the point. This was created from the same creator as Gilmore Girls. So she is obviously a genius. Gilmore Girls has a cult following. And more so than anything, she promotes strong female characters. Which so where's is, the bad? Where's the bad? <laughs> the banter's the bad. Oh my god. They just like, ask me a question. What's your it was so good, it was yours. <laughs> but that's like the best part about Gilmore Girls. Oh my god, Girls. their banter is just like, I can't, it's like, let's go with ping pong match. Yeah, it's like that's that shows their wit and their it's, intellect. That's not like that real they can wit. Think that fast no one kind of, talks that fast in real life. Yeah, but it's just like a, it's stylized, like and especially in the fifties, I feel like people probably did talk faster than that. Do I, sound like a, I sound like a Gilmore Girl right now. Like this is how right real now. girls talk. Gilmore Girls talk. That's why it's relatable. Though. It's, it's relatable. good acting and it's <laughs> relatable content. You think it's relatable content? Tell me more. <laughs> It's a bad, bad point. I it's not. Alright, then other than that, it's a really good show. I loved it. So I don't care. <laughs> it's just, we'll cut, what's your we'll bad? Dude, what's your bad? <laughs> my bad? Um, really nothing. Like, honestly, just the, Oh my god. Honestly, just that season, I have to wait for season two to come out. But, if I were to say something, it would just be the cringe that I feel when watching it. Because... Because of the banter? <laughs> <laughs> no, because this was like an actual period of time. This is what like women went through. So yeah. when like everything's like all the shit is falling on her and she's the victim, everyone still blames her. Joel left you? Yes. Why? What did you do? Yeah, when it's, it's a, entirely not her fault at all. This isn't my fault! Of course it's your fault. Oh, she, she's in the worst situation and it's yeah, gotten like it, beaten Today up. everyone would be like patting her on the back, constantly checking in with her. Then they're like, well... What are you going to do to fix it? And you know what? We wonder why, like, people of that generation now look at us and go, like, you guys are so soft. <laughs> because, like, people of that generation were, like, getting shit on by the world. And then the world was, after they shit on them, was going, like, it's your fault! <laughs> it isn't fair. It's hard and cruel. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so uh, as a millennial, I cringe watching those parts of it. Yeah, as like, a sympathetic why? millennial, so I... I cringe as well. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. what was your rating for it? My rating was an 8.3. And that's all I have to say about that. What's your rating? <laughs> Thanks.
<laughs> um, 9.5, Oh, obviously. 9.5. It's really, really good. So I love it. I want Basil... more. I was, I was so excited by the last episode of the season. Like, get excited for yeah. that. But then you're also going to, like, crash down when you realize that's the last episode. It is really, really good. It's really, I mean, it's nominated for the Emmys for a reason. Yeah. So have you got any advice oh, for potential viewers? Oh, yeah, I have some advice for them. My advice for you guys is to watch it and not put it on low, or this low. <laughs> Priority list and the watch list? Yeah, don't give it what it deserves, fuck. What? <laughs> Ask me again, last time. Maybe again, you just asked me my last... advice. I think you've had your chance. Oh, fine. <laughs> So tell, tell the viewers, do you have any advice for them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just watch it. Um, I'm pretty sure Amazon Prime put it on YouTube, the first episode on YouTube for free. So yes. honestly, if you're watching us now, you've got no excuse not to at least try it. <laughs> no excuse. And if you don't like it, I don't care. Fuck yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, make sure to subscribe to our channel comment below and make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications when we post new great stuff yep did you say hit the bell <laughs> no, you say. Oh, hit the bell below oh. to get our notifications i already said it hit the bell hit it like that <laughs> all right bye subscriber